Maryland State Delegate Mike Rogers of Anne Arundel County assisting with the donation of equipment for CYS Youth Sports. The donation was made possible by the Live Casino and Hotel. Hello and welcome to Meet Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, Family Advocacy offers stress management seminars. The Army trains on a new fitness test and a story from the Army Futures Command. These stories and more, but first on a recent show, we spoke with the director of MWR's Child and Youth Services, Francisco Jameson, about the status of child care on post. As the situation continues to evolve with child care, we thought it best to visit with Jameson again. The biggest news this week is effective the 1st of September. How customers are being prioritized is being changed. OSD and Department of Defense, uh, they did some surveys, they did some, some research on it, and a lot of child care was going to civilians. Um, and there were a lot of military that were on wait list. Uh, Fort Meade was, was one of those garrisons where we had a high wait list, you know, 400 plus people on the wait list. And the biggest change to remember? The, the biggest change, I think, for the new priorities that are going to take place on September 1st are for civilians to recognize that they may be supplanted. I think that's the biggest change that everyone on Fort Meade needs to understand is that potentially if you are not in the top two categories, uh, essentially you could be supplanted. This is a fluid situation. So you could get a space back in January and the next week get supplanted again because the way that the wait list works a, you know, and PCS seasons work, you might find a military family coming onto Fort Meade every few weeks and bumping you every few weeks. Join us on August 11th for a special Facebook Live Town Hall focusing on youth and the upcoming school year. Stay tuned for details. Meanwhile, a military training team from Fort Eustis, Virginia have spent a week here at Fort Meade to train Army units on the new Army Combat Fitness Test. The Army completed the distribution and fueling of the equipment needed for the new test in June, but because of COVID-19, training was suspended. So we actually kind of came to a halt there for the last three to four months and we're, we're just getting started here the last couple of weeks. We kind of picked back up and now we're getting back out to those units uh, to conduct the training. The training team's goals at Fort Meade were the same as they are at every installation. Because this is a new test and uh, a lot of soldiers aren't familiar with the events that we're you know, placing for to them, we want to know that they can execute them themselves and then that they can teach their units. The training team and Fort Meade welcomed a special visitor midweek, Colonel David Feltwell, the command physical therapist for the Center for Initial Military Training. Feltwell is part of the Army team that wrote the book on the new test and is looking forward to seeing the data generated from the new test. The research, the basic science has been done. What we'll be doing now is collecting data not just on 63 units but on the whole army. So we go from several tens of thousands of potential data points to a couple of million. That's the big thing. So collecting data on the whole force across a year is going to confirm that we've got everything right in terms of the grading. Elsewhere, MWR's Family Advocacy Program is offering a continuing series of stress management seminars. Starting on August 13th, they're being offered virtually via Microsoft Teams on the second and fourth Thursdays of the month. Family Advocacy stresses that this is an interactive group that will discuss the causes, symptoms, and effects of stress management, plus ways to manage it. For more information, contact the Family Advocacy Program at 301-677-4118. Finally this week, a story from the new Army Futures Command in Austin, Texas, and the establishment of the first soldier-led software factory. According to the command, the software factory will leverage a train-with-industry pipeline to empower soldiers and civilians. What Software Factory is all about is the idea that soldiers are going to need to be able to code their own solutions in a way that we can't really foresee with, with very much advance notice. Come 2021, uh, our plans are to put the Army's first software factory in Austin, Texas uh, and co-locate that with Army Futures Command headquarters. The, the benefit of working and developing software in this manner is that we can attack smaller problems quicker. There are no shortage of areas within the, the Army or really in any company or corporation where software cannot be applied. So Software Factory is going to rely heavily on partnerships with both academia and industry. Uh, we envision it as a collection of public-private partnerships, not just across Austin, but across the nation writ large, that we want to be able to pull from in a modern, agile type of way. Uh, too often in the Army, the, those that are creating software are far removed from who the users are. Uh, that's just not the case here. With an organic software development capability developed by soldiers for soldiers, we're essentially reducing the user feedback cycle to as little as 24 hours. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.